Welcome, friends. Welcome to worship with First United Methodist Church of Santa Monica. We are grateful for your presence wherever you are in your spiritual path and whatever it is you bring with you to worship. Online and in person, may we gather and be a community who worships, loves, serves, and prays together. During this season, when we set aside time to honor and celebrate Thanksgiving, we welcome you in gratitude and joy. Many of us come to worship with hearts heavy, minds busy. So I invite you to take a few moments, to take a few breaths, to welcome God's presence, God's presence that invites us to bring the fullness of who we are into this place and into beloved community. If you are joining us for the first time, we count it a blessing. There is a link in this video and a sign-in uh, book at the welcome table uh, where you can get connected or come and talk with one of the pastors following worship. We look forward to getting to know you. In our worship, we pray for God's Spirit to be with us and to guide our community. As the prelude begins, let us turn our hearts and our attention to the worship of God.
Please join together in the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We glorify God with songs of thanksgiving and joy. God has done great things for us, filling us with grace. God fed our ancestors in the wilderness. God clothes us with hope. We will offer our hearts to God, always saying, thank you to the one who loves us. We ask your blessings, O God, our Creator, who lives and reigns forever and ever. may be seated. We take time to celebrate our mission and common life together by lifting up ways we can love God and our neighbors through worship, prayer, and service. After worship today, the Health Ministry Council is providing free blood pressure screenings in the fireside room. We give thanks to the ministry's ongoing commitment and care to the community. Additionally, after worship, United Women in Faith, formerly United Methodist Women, invite all to join their first in-person gathering to hear more about the Wesley Foundation's work at UCLA. Grab a cup of coffee and join them in Simpkins Hall. The program will start at 11. It's hard to believe, but Advent begins next week. To help you prepare, we have an Advent page in the order of worship with a list of ways to engage and move through the season, including the Advent devotional, as well as opportunities to give through Angel Tree, Family Ministries Toy Drive, and Alternative Christmas. Check out the details for pledging, as well as upcoming events in the order of worship and the homepage of our website. Or stop by the welcome table following worship and visit with staff member David Penson if you have any questions. We give thanks for God's creating spirit that continues to give us life and lead us forward. Thanks be to God. It's a joy this morning to welcome five new members uh, as we worship today. And so I'm going to ask him to stand, uh, or come up if you want to, it would be great, so everybody can meet you. Ron, you want to come up? Great. No, you're already in. You're good. <laughs> this is another five uh, members, and um, we're just so excited to have you be part of the fellowship of this congregation and uh, be here today. So uh, let me introduce to you uh, Luann Hull, Ron Krieger, Titi Osoba, whose birthday is tomorrow, by the way, <laughs> Chris Sweat, and Will Sweat. Welcome. Welcome. So let's give him a big round of applause. <laughs> We're excited to welcome Bob and Joyce Rose, who just became new members last month, to share a stewardship moment with us today. Yeah, why give? Well, first, we're kind of reminded of that in the Old Testament, it says give 10%. Well, doesn't that carry over to the New Testament? Because we got a lot more in the Old Testament, we got Christ Jesus for us. So that's kind of a guideline for 10%, and you give to to keep this building up, and more importantly, the works of the church cannot exist without our contributions. So give and give freely, as it says, God loves a gracious, happy giver. 
I have to add something. I can't stand up here and not say anything. Uh, anyway, we are new members to this congregation, but we started worshiping with all of you online during the pandemic. And the first time we tuned in, we had moved down here a couple years before, but still drove back up to the valley to our old church. But we thought during this time, it would be good to get to know people. And so the first place we tuned into was Santa Monica because it was closest to our house. And lo and behold, on the very first online meeting we went to, they talked about a walking group that met Sunday morning, which was wonderful for us. And as we walked with them and talked with them, we never went to another church online, we just stayed here, because we were continually amazed at what this congregation does. You take care of the little things like giving a place for fellowship with, feather, with fellow believers and walking on that Sunday morning, which was a godsend to us. But then there was more. There was the Girl Scouts on the line. There was the missions in Haiti. Every time we turned around, we found out something else that this congregation does that we wanted to be a part of. And as a longtime Methodist, I, so, um, I am so tied to the Methodist Church because when we give to our congregation, whichever one it is, part of that money goes out with other congregations to fund missions and hospitals and missionaries all over the world where it is most needed. So I am very honored that uh, Pastor Ferris asked us to speak because uh, giving is so important. God said it was important. And it's, we need to give more than God needs our money, believe me. When you hold on to your money, you get tight. But when you write that first check every week or every month or however you get paid and give it, it loosens all these muscles and you find yourself being generous in lots of many walks of life. Thank you. The lesson today is Luke, chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, would serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. What a great day this is. Five more new members and an opportunity to give back in our annual financial stewardship campaign. Finding life giving life in the beautiful, faithful, hope-filled community that is First United Methodist Church. 
Do you know that our sanctuary was dedicated 69 years ago this week on November 22nd, 1953? Thanks be to God for the many blessings of these years of faithful ministry and mission with this beautiful sanctuary as our spiritual home and our launching pad. Despite the passage of these decades, some things don't change much, I imagine. Still, we gather for worship and praise. Still, we decorate with the signs of the season, as Mike has so beautifully done for us again this year. Cornucopia, these horn-shaped containers filled with fruit, vegetables, grain, symbolizing great abundance, overflowing supply, giving us a visual picture of God's abundant, overflowing goodness to us. Cornucopia, reminding us that the Lord is good and merciful, that God's steadfast love endures forever, God's faithfulness to all generations. In the words of a traditional prayer for thanksgiving, we give thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us faithful stewards of thy great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. Over the years, many of you have told me that the passage from Luke's Gospel that Bill read for us is your favorite. I wonder how many times over the years these words have been read in this sanctuary. Echoing Psalm 23, these verses bring ancient words of blessing and promise conveyed in intimate and loving terms. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The tender mercy of our God. You know, in addition to being Consecration Sunday as we conclude our stewardship campaign and Thanksgiving Sunday and the anniversary of our sanctuary, this is also on the church calendar, Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday in the church year before we start all over again and Advent begins to prepare us for the birth of the Christ child, Christ the King Sunday. And what a king this is, what a king we have. Power and might, yes, but not tyranny or control. Majesty and honor, yes, but not ruthlessness or arbitrary whim. No, ours is a king of tender mercy, the voice of the voiceless, the power of the powerless, creating a community of wholeness, a realm of peace, in which all hunger and thirst are nourished, in which the stranger is welcomed, the hurting are healed, and the captive set free. How grateful we are to be subjects of such a king as this. And how grateful we are in this Thanksgiving week to live in a land of freedom and democracy, still living towards our highest ideals, hopes, and dreams. It was our president, Abraham Lincoln, who set the tone in his first Thanksgiving proclamation of 1863, delivered in the midst of our horrible civil war, President Lincoln nevertheless declared, the year that is drawing to its close has been fulfilled 
with the blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. To these bounties which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added which are of so extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften even the heart which is habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of the almighty God, he said. No human counsel hath devised, nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God. He said, it has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and voice by the whole American people. Dear brothers and sisters of the beloved community of Jesus Christ, as we prepare our hearts and homes for the annual celebration of Thanksgiving, as we consecrate our financial pledges this day, let us do so mindful of the faith that undergirds it all. A faith for such a serious time as this one in which we now live. A faith that turns us from resignation and grounds us in hope. A faith full of joy and gratitude, confident in the abundant, overflowing cornucopia of God's goodness towards us and to all generations. Finding life giving life, past, present, and long into the future. Thanks be to God. Amen. We come to a time of prayer, a time to rest in God's loving presence and listen for God's voice. Let us enter into silent prayer. creation. Thank you for the wonderful things you have made, for our world full of life, and for each beloved that lives and breathes. We give thanks. In this season of thanksgiving, we offer our gratitude to you, the giver of all good and perfect gifts, for the hands of friendship and caring that have been extended to us and the grace 
we have received, for your continuous provision in our lives, for the embrace of love that sustains us through the day. We give thanks. Gracious Creator, you have given us so much. And too often, we take these things for granted. You call us to live in caring community. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us. Yet, we worry there may not be enough. And our worrying gets in the way of our sharing. For all the times when we mistreat and misuse your gifts. For all the times we assume that we get what we have by ourselves. Forgive us and lead us back to the path of wisdom and generosity. Today we offer our prayers for one another and those in need of healing and strength. We pray for Jack Pearson, Alan Walker, Bernice Southcott, and Jim Smith. And we bless this prayer quilt as we join in prayer for Riker Pitney. We lift up prayers for Reuben Quintana in the death of his father, and David Mahan in the death of his stepfather. We give thanks for the life and life everlasting of Bernice de Leon and David Patton Pat Sterling. May your healing love surround these beloveds and their families, and may they be sustained with the presence of the Holy Spirit our comforter. God, we lift up the prayers that are unspoken that remain in our hearts. And together we pray as Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We take time for the offering of our gifts. Through your generosity, our community provides connection and belonging and opportunities to grow in God's unconditional love. In a moment, the ushers will come forward to receive the offering. If you are a new visitor, you can fill out the Let's Connect card found in the pew rack and place it in the offering plate. For those worshiping online, you will find a link to our secure giving page in the description of this video. After this morning's offering is collected, you will be invited to come forward to place your 2023 pledge card here in the box 
so hold on to those for now. Through these acts of faithful giving, may the Spirit of God touch our hearts and lives to live out the love of God in all we do. already brought or mailed your pledge cards to the church office that's wonderful and that means they're already in the box um, if you would like now we've not been able to do this for a few years because of COVID so um, uh, this has been our practice to sing and to come forward to place our pledge cards in the box uh, indicating our financial support of the ministries and mission of this congregation in the year ahead so please stand, let us sing, and come forward if you'd like to place your card in the box.
together in the prayer of consecration. Creator God, with gratitude we return to you what is yours as we dedicate our gifts in the name of Christ. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your blessings and of your great bounty in the provisions of our necessities and the relief of all who are in need. May our spirits be strengthened by using only what we need, and may we use our strength to help those who need us. In gratitude for all your goodness, we pledge to love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Give us grace to fill others' lives with love, hope, and joy, to the honor of your name, and in the service of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now may the God of hope fill you with hope, joy, love, and fill you with peace as you go forth to serve God in our world. Amen.